It's time for your NXT 7th of February review. Vengeance days in the books. Grayson War suspended. Mega matches tonight. Is the title picture going to be turned upside down? How good was Ding Ding, Hello Bang, whatever it's called? And do we find out who done it? Will Tiffany Stratton join Chase University? Only time will tell. But we kick off the show with Carmelo Hayes. He comes out. He says he's done it all in NXT, basically, and he wants to challenge for the NXT. Interrupt it. It's not quite the Royal Rumble gong or Undertaker's. It's just JD McGonagall coming out and says, if I'm not mistaken, I think you were going to challenge for the title there. And he's like, I want to challenge for the title. So it kind of looks like these two are having like a number one contender match later, but it's not really. It's kind of more, you know, oh, who's going to be the top dog in NXT behind the champion sort of thing, um, which kind of leads to our next segment of the show. Grayson War has been suspended by WWE for one week, and you're probably wondering what is this for? Why is Shawn Michaels looking not very happy at Grayson War, who in turn doesn't look very happy? Well, I'll tell you why that is. That is because he has been suspended due to his actions at the Vengeance Day pay-per-view, and it was the media call. It was a weird one. You know, you've got Shawn Michaels, so he's doing the media call. Grayson Waller storms in. He's demanding what, why Shawn Michaels doesn't think he's the guy. Is it, does he want a photo taken with him? You're kind of referring to the time with Diesel, and he's like, oh, am I not like Diesel? Am I not good enough? And, you know, it's kind of like the blurred lines between, like, is this scripted or is it? But it's so obvious that it is. Like, oh man, it's like what we used to do stuff like this where you know it did blur the lines, but this doesn't blur the lines. You know, it literally is just um, you know, like it literally just is. So forced, and I, I, I wish they could do a better job of it. But you know what, Grayson Moore, I did say in the raw review that he probably should be called up into the main roster, but it is what it is, and I guess you've got. A, We've got to move on, you know, and this is pretty big news that he's been suspended, but it is just for a week. I mean, like they said on commentary, Booker T saying that he's seen that before when somebody's got the hunger, blah, 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 for a title. You know, they, uh, they take matters into their own hands and they can get aggressive with the authority figures. And that's exactly what happened tonight on uh, NXT. Grace Moore has been suspended for his actions at Vengeance Day. But yeah, it's only been, it's only a week, you know. If they wanted to do like a big deal of this, could they not have suspended him for like, suspend it indefinitely? Then he can come back in like three weeks time. Oh, but they've suspended him for a week. And he's been taken off the live offence. Which I'm sure Grayson Moore is probably glad about. So Ruka then makes her way to the ring and she is taking on Zoe Starks. And, you know, Booker T and your other wee man can... Try and make you believe that Soruk has got a chance here, but I mean, so he starts basically squashes her. And the weird thing is, like, after the match, then Soruk attacks, so he starts. So I just didn't really get most of this. And throughout, like, the first half an hour, the women's tag team champions, uh, like, show up, and of course, you've got Brooks Jensen and those sort of guys. They've thrown a surprise celebration, but who was she on the phone to? And, it looks like it's going to get revealed throughout the night, but it just doesn't get really revealed throughout the night. Or does it? You'll have to stay tuned a wee bit later on. We then have this big bastard, Kaito, defeating Chan, and he squishes him. And Chan posted the pictures of, the, of his injuries from this match to um, Twitter. Big, massive chops on his chest. Brutal, man. Absolutely brutal. You definitely wouldn't want these done to you. That is all I'm going to say. But this big guy, I mean, how, how much of the really... Going to push him. Then we're basically getting like more of the who done it stuff. You know, Elsa Fire comes in with our wee body tag team partner, Elsa Dawn, and it's just like the charisma displayed by Alba Fire. It's like non existent. She just comes in and she just stares blankly and it just absolutely sucks. And it's like, if someone was, wasn't was guilty, they would have just said no. <laughs> and then they laugh and then like Diamond Mind's like, did you do it? Why? No, I didn't do it. See, at this point, man, it's like see the like I said in the last last week's review, it, it was just garbage the way they'd done it because it was just so cheesy. It's like 
Well, if you look at this person, they couldn't have done it. Like, they, they tried to debunk it like it was a, a full-on police investigation. It's like, no, it just, it just really ain't up easily done. Defeats her, and, you know, of course, they're going to book her relatively uh, strong. But as this match is ending, and easily done has uh, picked up the victory here, a car arrives in some shoes, exit the car, and they walk off, and it's like, Who's that going to be? Mystery shoes, about a, about a size 11. I'm about a size 11. I can guarantee you it wasn't me that was at this NXT show. But up next, at the end of the first hour, we do have Carmelo Hayes taking on JD McGonagoo. McGonagoo? McGonagoo? Whatever you pronounce his name, man. For me, this was match of the night. Uh, nothing really comes close, in my opinion. Again, wasn't really a massive fan of the match, but you know, it's all about the segments in wrestling. You know, you have to make you care, and if you care about the people, the matches are a wee bit better. And I like Carmelo Hayes, and I'm glad he picked up the victory here, but it wasn't uh, clean as you like because it was a returning Dragonov who came back and kind of distracted JD, which led to Carmelo Hayes picking up the win. So yeah, the right guy won and Dragunov chases JD out of the building. Uh, Tiffany Stratton is backstage applying makeup. Tia Hale then comes in, basically says, demands answers about why Tiffany doesn't want to join Chase U. But then like Tia Hale, like, she's a very energetic, bubbly personality for wrestling. So I had no complaints with this segment. And then she then gets dragged away by The Rock's daughter. And then Tiffany Stratton's like, Ah well, I'll just go back to balling myself up. So, aye, that was no bad. We then have Leia Falkyrie taking on uh, Feroz, who's uh, accompanied to the ring by, uh, what's, her, what's her name? Wendy Choo Choo. But then, out comes Electra Lopez with brass knucks, and you're thinking, right, what, what's going on here? And she tries to pass the knucks to uh, Faru, but then this essentially costs Faru the match to Leia Falkyrie, who's, you know, Recently debuted, so I mean, I wasn't surprised with the winner here, but I'm kind of surprised the way it happened. I just thought Farouz wouldn't really win that easy, if I'm being honest. And then we cut to Wes Lee's vlog, the day of Vengeance Day. I have no real problem with this, it kind of just shows you his routine that day, him getting on board his plane, leaving. I mean, we've all did vlogs, we've all got on board transport and did a wee vlog. Cheap plug there. The game in Jesus, of course, but then he's interviewed backstage and basically before he gets to say anything, Tony D shows up and challenges him to next week. So yeah, we're getting Tony D against Wesley. And you know what, guys? I don't mind this Wesley guy, he can just as a generic wrestler. But I think it's about time Tony D got a belt, isn't it? And then he accompanies the big man is Consolari to the ring, my friends. Underboss stacks up next against Audacity Jones. This guy kind of just looks like a, a rip-off of Mark Henry, if we're being honest with the, the whole Jamaican flag thing. It just reminds me of like early Mark Henry when he was in the Nation of Domination. But end of the day is the underboss. And it's it's funny, like when you hear the term underboss, always like mafia related because you know that's what Tony D is. It's a mafia, it's a family. Cancelary, man. But it's like it literally just is the role of you're under the boss, not like, you know, the boss is riding you, so to speak. But it's a pretty simple term, but um, a decent match here. I like the fact that, but again, like, you know, they're trying to build up the fact that Tony D is like the mob boss. And it's like, there's only two guys in it. Like, what crew in the world of crime and TV shows and real life run off two people? It just doesn't work, right? As great as Tony D is... You know, there is, there's is obvious flaws in it, and this is definitely one of them. Uh, but yeah, underboss stacks wins, which I'm glad to see. We then have Chase University coming out, and of course they are taking on Pretty Deadly, who have been absolutely devastated since Vengeance Day. They haven't took a bath, they've, they've stayed up, they haven't been able to sleep. Booker T said he was going to throw them a bar of soap. Didn't know if he wanted them to bend over or whatever, but then we have Pretty Deadly versus Chase University. And, you know, they're hyping up the fact that, oh, Pretty Deadly have no chance in this match, they're so off their game, and then they end up winning anyway. And it's like, that just makes, that just makes Chase University, in my opinion, 
look weak, which of course they were helped by the fact that um, Fia Hale ma magically appears at ringside and that's essentially what, you know, led to a bit of a distraction and all that good stuff. But anyway, guys, that is the match is done for tonight and it is next. It is Ding Dong Hello. I can't believe that this actually ended the show, but nonetheless it did and, you know, I'm not here to uh, completely bury it because, you know, I love wrestling. Damn it. But anyway, staying up to watch NXT, not as bad because see when you're watching Raw or a pay-per-view in the UK and you're having to sit up to like half four, five o'clock, man. Absolute torture. Absolute brutality. But, you know, just past three o'clock, that's no bad. You can still get eight hours sleep, get up about 11. No bad. No bad at all. But let's dive into the ending segment here. And I think it just sucks the fact you wait for like two hours to get to the end of a show. And then it's just like this, it's just Bailey Ding Dong Hello, I mean it's like come on man, that's just, you know, I don't think any wrestling talk show that they've done over the years should realistically ever be end of a show, and I'm not, like, you know, you know, the highlight reel was pretty good, the cutting edge is alright, I mean there's a few other ones you could maybe throw in there, I mean Miz TV's just fucking abysmal, but at the end of the day, you can't know what was going to happen here. You can't know that one of toxic, toxic attraction was going to turn on each other. We've got Gigi Dole and JC Jane throwing some pretty sick burns back at each other. So you go, that's the JC Jane position when you're lying down looking up at the lights. And then she's like, you're a tire on Saturday. This is her to Gigi Dolan. Looked like a hobo banged a Chucky doll. Pretty good, pretty funny, but end of the day. It was obvious what was coming, it was just more of a question of who's going to turn heel. So JC Jane is the heel, sweet chin music, threw her at the door, the door didn't actually go through, and then Bailey's kind of just sitting there like, oh well, that didn't really go according to plan, did it guys? But I should sure NXT a few, we had some returns, we had some heel turns, I'm not really bothered in the slightest, the show was shite, I'm going to give it a 1 out of 10. And it wasn't really worth me staying up for, but guess what, it means I don't have to date the Mara, so until then, peace.